how to combine equilibrium expressions. So when reactions with equilibrium are combined to compose net reactions, analogously to the way reactions are combined in the applications of Hess's law, uh, the equilibrium constants follow different rules. And normally when you add reactions in Hess's law, you add the values of enthalpy. But in the case of equilibrium constants, uh, there are three rules that you would apply. For reversing the reactions, you take the reciprocal of the reaction. So if you have a forward reaction with the value of k, the reaction written backwards, uh, the value becomes 1 over k. The second rule is if, the, if a reaction is multiplied by a number, then the value of k is raised by a power equal to that number. So if you multiply by a reaction, a two, uh, reaction by 2, then the value of k will be squared. If you multiply a reaction by 3, the value of k will be raised to the power of 3 and so on. And if uh, the, uh, the k for a reaction made up of two separate reactions is the product of the two reactions that are the k of the two reactions that are used. So we'll give an example here. This is from page 640 of your text. The first two reactions are the dissolution of hydrochloric acid and the dissociation of oxalic acid. The two reactions are combined in a, in a manner like they're combined when you use Hess's law and you're supposed to find this. This is your target equation. And what is the equilibrium constant for that target equation? So the first step is to double the first reaction because we need uh, two hydrochloric acids. And to double the reaction, you square the equilibrium constant. So we get this value for it. And the second step is to reverse the second reaction. Reaction number two. So the oxalate anion is on this side, and it gives you two protons, and then you show the um, undissolved oxalate. And when you reverse the reaction, you take the reciprocal of the number. Notice how I put this to the power of minus one. It's like saying one over x of the original number. These are the two equilibrium constants for the two reactions that have been modified in that way. The net reaction, appears at the top of the next board, uh, is obtained by cancelling hydrogen. So the net reaction that we get is here, and the net case, the KC, equilibrium constant, is, the base, is based on multiplying the K for the first and the second reaction, so you get a value of 0.12. In the second example, a uh, reaction between hydrogen and gaseous iodine forms hydroiodic acid and reaction of nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas can form ammonia and the two equilibrium constants for those reactions are given here. The target reaction is to combine ammonia with gaseous iodine to give hydroiodic acid and nitrogen gas. To get that target equation we need to multiply the second, we have to flip the second equation. So we put the ammonia on the left, nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas on the right. So if we flip the equation, we take the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant, giving this number. So we take uh, this number and raise it to the power of the minus one, or one over that number. We'll give you 9.615 times 10 to the three. Uh, we multiply the first reaction by three in order to get uh, the three hydrogens and the three iodines and the six hydroiodic acids. So we need it to cancel the three hydrogens over here, which we show here as well. And then you get the target equation. Ammonia, iodine, nitrogen gas, hydroiodic acid. When we multiply this equation by three, we raise the Kp associated with this equation to the power of three and get this number. So this number raised to the power of three will give this number. The resulting equilibrium for the target equation is based on the addition of these two equations. When you add the two equations, you multiply their appropriate equilibrium values, so you get a value of 1.51 times 10 to the 9 as the final equilibrium constant. Brings us to the next subject. There are two types of equilibrium, homogeneous equilibrium and heterogeneous equilibrium. 
Homogeneous equilibrium simply means that all the substances involved in a reaction are in the same phase. Whereas with heterogeneous equilibrium, not all the substances involved in the reaction are in the same phase. And here's an example. This is from page 641 of Brown, 10th edition. Lead chloride will dissolve into plumbus cations and chloride anions. The above reaction is heterogeneous because the concentrations of pure, uh, there are, there is a solid phase and there are two aqueous substances. But when you write the equilibrium constant, you only include things that are in the aqueous phase or gases. You don't, you don't include pure liquids or solids. So in the case of this reaction, which would be products over reactants, because the reactant is a solid and has to remain at a constant concentration, uh, you only put lead and chloride in the equation. Remember that you take the coefficients and place them as powers. Which brings us to the next um, subject matter, which is the use of ICE and IREC tables. ICE is an acronym for Initial Change Equilibrium. Uh, you use an ICE table when the concentrations of the of reactants are given, in the react and then you want to um, calculate the other ones. You would use an IREC table for when they give you mole amounts, and it gives you one additional step. Initial, reacting, equilibrium, concentration. And to find the concentration, you need the volume of the reacting vessels. So ICE and IREC tables are both useful depending on how uh, the problem is set up. An example of, of a problem that we use an ICE table is the uh, dissolution of sulfur trioxide into sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas. In this particular problem, uh, they give us two initial conditions. They tell us the initial condition of the amount of sulfur trioxide being reacted and its equilibrium concentration. Two data points, the rest can be calculated uh, simply by looking at the stoichiometry and the change. We know that if you start off with 0.5 moles of something and that you end up with 0.2 moles of that same thing, it must mean that 0.3 of it was used up somehow. Because the stoichiometry is 2 to 2 for this reaction, it would mean that whatever disappeared here as a reactant has to appear as a product on the other side. Same stoichiometry, so therefore the same amount. So whatever disappears here has to appear the same amount over there. That's how I got these two numbers. And lastly, how do I get to find out the oxygen concentration? By taking into account the stoichiometry. The stoichiometry is 2 to 1. So if 2 moles of something disappear here, then half as many moles have to appear on the other side. So half, a mole, um, half of 0.3 is 0.15, and your equilibrium condition is 0.15 moles of oxygen. The equilibrium constant is calculated by putting products over reactants. Remember to put the coefficients as powers, and then you enter all the numbers that you obtain in this last line of the calculation. This is the concentration of sulfur dioxide, here's the concentration of oxygen, here's the concentration of sulfur trioxide, notice these two are raised to the power of two, final answer, 0.337, which we're allowed to report to three significant figures because none of the numbers have more than three significant figures, final answer, 0.338.